Hello and welcome to this mini log review. My name is Bo and welcome to Bo Beats. So I've had the mini log for over two years now and I felt it was time to ask, is it still worth getting? So let's find out. I want to start this review a bit differently. I want to address three concerns that people have when asking about the Minilog. First, how clicky are the envelopes? Secondly, how bad is the resonance? And three, how noisy is it? So let's start by examining these three common questions. But first, let's address another question, and that is where to find good courses about mixing and mastering and video editing and photos and maybe gardening. Well, Skillshare got you covered and they are sponsoring this video. So if you use my link in the description, the first 500 uses it gets two months for free with Skillshare. You can try out their service and see if it's for you. They are an affordable video platform learning community where you can gain access to a lot of different courses in a lot of different subject areas. And here's a current favorite of mine that I think you should check out. And this course is about Ableton Live and I've actually said that I really want to learn more about this software so I can use it here on the channel. So that's why I'm looking into this course here over at Skillshare. All right, so let's start by addressing the clicky envelopes. Now, listen closely here. With this waveform here, it's a little hard to hear, but if I turn it into a triangle, you can hear that it's quite clicky, but don't worry, this is actually quite easy to fix. You hear the click? Let's turn it up. And you do have to turn it up quite a bit. Something like this. And now, it is much less noticeable. So yes, there's a fair bit of click to it when the tag is all the way down. But if you just increase it enough, you can get this sort of sweet spot where you don't have this sharp clicky attack. And it still sounds good, it's still snappy. So just turn up the attack a bit and you'll be fine. Now let's answer the second question about the noise level because under certain circumstances, this synth can be quite noisy. So for example, when using the USB connected to the computer, some people experience high levels of USB noise. Oftentimes I've just unplugged the mini log and it goes away. So I'm not an electrician. I can't explain why this is. I just know that it's definitely connected to the mini log in some way. And some people experience this problem. Now, secondly, this is not a super noisy analog synth when it comes to like a raw tone. We just increase release, we can hear. Not particularly noisy, but the problem comes in when we enable the delay. You start to hear the noise from the delay. Now there is of course the high pass cutoff, which lets you cut the high frequencies and you can have it to post filter. So it comes after this filter section or pre-filter. So that's cool. So we can just use it. And as you can see, almost set to 12 o'clock, it, you know, it does cut some of the, some of the delay, but it also cuts some of the noise. So if you really want a noise-free delay, you should probably add an external unit to this synth or look at some other product. Now, the third question I want to answer is, how much of the bass is lost when we increase resonance. Basically, the Minilog has sort of a bad rep of having a bad 
resonance that steals a lot of the bass. So let's listen here. So the cutoff is at max, the resonance is at zero. So when we increase the resonance, you can hear that it does steal a lot of the bass frequencies. In a way which is not really comparable to some of my other synths, that's for sure. Now why this is, I have no clue. But the thing is, you do have a little bit of a workaround, because is this really bad for bass sounds? No, because we have the voice modes here, where you have a mono mode. And the mono mode adds a sub, so let's see here. So here's the sequence without the sub, and here's with the sub. So even with the resonance turned up and we have some squelchy sounds, we still have some bass. So let's talk a little bit about the different sections and what you can do on the synth. This is not a full tutorial or anything, I just want to give you a brief overview. So we have two different VCOs here and of course as you saw earlier we can add, for example, with the mono voice mode here, we can add a sub oscillator, a subtone to it as well. We have the pitch for the individual oscillators, we can set different waveforms, we have the saw, the triangle and the square, and actually the triangle I think is pretty known in the community as being very beefy. So the triangle is really beefy. And yeah, we have the saw, and a square. I don't find it that bass heavy, the square, um, but it, I guess, yeah. And then we have the shape knob, and as you can see when I press a note here, and I turn the shape knob, and if I turn all the way for the square wave, we get just a straight line. And here's the first cool interaction, we have an LFO down here, and this LFO can be sent to the shape, so we can set the LFO here to the shape, increase the rate, and then we use intensity, the rate is how fast, and the intensity is how much. So we're basically modulating the pulse width. Which you can see over here on the screen as well, it sort of moves with the LFO. And then we have the mixer section where we can mix between the two different LFOs and we can use this lever here to change the octave of the oscillator. So let's increase oscillator number two. Now we have this filter section with the cutoff. There's a two-pole and four-pole option, basically changing the, the slope of the cutoff. So here's another cool interaction. We have the EG intensity. This is combined with this envelope generator here, which is used for multiple things. For example, over here for the pitch EG. And we have the amp EG, which basically controls the amplitudes envelope. So if I want a longer attack, I can just increase the attack, I can increase the decay. So here, for example, I can use the envelope generator here to impact the cutoff. So let's increase the EG intensity. And we already touched on the LFO, you can increase the rate, the intensity, you can set it to either pitch, shape, or cutoff. And there's also three waveforms, the same ones as for the oscillators, with the sawtooth, the triangle, and the square wave. And lastly over here we have a very cool section here with the VCO2 modulations. These are modulations that apply only to the second oscillator, and we have cross mod depth, 
and pitch EG intensity. This, for example, uses the EG to impact the pitch. So let's see here if we turn it up. So as you can hear, because we had a long attack, it's sort of wow. If we would shorten it. And then there's a sync feature and a ring modulator as well, as well as the cross mod adapt. Now there's also a delay that we touched on with feedback and time and high pass, but let's move on to something that I think is kind of the most important and most exciting feature of this synth besides the hands-on workflow, and that is the voice modes. So we have this pad sound here, let me just remove that pitch here. So this is in poly mode, so you have four notes available. We can also do duo, and then you use the voice mode depth to increase, for example, here's the detuning. So basically we have two note polyphony. And then we have a unison mode, just one note polyphony. And let's turn the sync on here, made a little bit of a snappier sound. And we can of course use this 16 step sequencer here. And what's really cool with the sequencer is that we can also do uh, some motion recording. And then we have the mono mode, which I showed you. And then we have chords mode. I don't really use this a lot. You can switch between different types of chords here. This is not something I really use. And then we have a delay, not something I use either. And then we have an arpeggiator, which I do use sometimes. And there's different modes here as well for it. Then there's a side chaining mode, which I don't really use either. Now let's talk about what kind of sounds it's good for. So what kind of synth sounds is the mini low good for? Well, I would say bass, lead and pad sounds. If you like the metallic kind of pad sounds or you use a lot of external effects, because if you do, it makes some really good pad sounds, but it can sound a little bit harsh. <laughs> The snappy envelopes are really good for drum sounds and the like, so yeah, it can do a multitude of different sounds, but don't really expect anything too organic or too kind of mellow or sweet sounding. It's a little bit harsh, a little bit like sharp edges here and there, so keep that in mind.
So here are some final thoughts. The Minilogue is already a classic. People will remember this synth, not because of its flawlessness, but because of its flawed character and lovely workflow. And to me it feels original. And as with all originals, not everybody will enjoy it. It's analog, but it often sounds metallic and harsh and hard. And yet it doesn't sound like any VST I have ever heard. It sounds distinct. Even if my Moog Sub 37 sounds creamy and rich in tone, I would probably not be able to reliably pick it if I did a blind test with say a Moog clone or some software. The Minilog, however, stands out with its sharp metallic angles, noisy delay and kind of quirky resonance. The best part is the hands-on control. It's just excellent design, nothing more, nothing less. And it's especially nice for making your own sounds with it, great for beginners, there's no real menu diving, no touch screens, no confusion, just hands-on fun sound design. So even if you're not entirely sold on the sound, the workflow could win you over. But if you truly dislike what you're hearing, you should stay away from this synth because the demos I've presented you with gives you a pretty solid understanding of what this synth is about sound-wise. So let's talk alternatives. The alternatives I've picked are synths which all share decent hands-on control. And I think a good alternative could be the monologue. It has better resonance, a filthier sound. Another great pick could be the Neutron from Behringer. A lot of hands-on possibilities with the patch bay and stuff like that. Then we have like the DeepMind 6 from Behringer, similarly priced. Uh, more voices, I think six voices. And yeah, it has a nice sound as well. You could also go for something like the Base Station 2. Not similar in the sense that it's a, it's a mono, just like the monologue, but it's fairly priced, a lot of hands-on capabilities. Very different sound from the Minilogue, but also a great option to pick if you are into these sort of hands-on analog experiences. And you could also look for a used Analog 4 Mark 1, because I've seen them go for around 500, 600 euros. I've actually found one just now when I googled it in a store in Stockholm for, I think, about 530 euros used. So if you find one used in a decent shape, it's also a very fun polyphonic synth that you should check out. So this was a follow-up two-year review on the Korg Minilog. I hope you enjoyed this concept. If you do, let me know in the comments if you want me to do more follow-up videos, if there's stuff you want to know about stuff I've reviewed previously, what I think about it now. And if you support my sponsor, Skillyshare, by using their link and signing up for their service and trying it out, you know, it, it does increase the likelihood that I will have them on as a sponsor again, which in turn actually helps me make more content. It's very simple. The more we support the sponsor, the more the sponsor gives back to the channel. You can try out their service for free for two months and decide for yourself. It's for you if you have any value in using it. So check it out if you want to. It supports what I do, it supports the channel, supports future, future videos here. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting and I hope you have a super pleasant day. Thank you.